Hey everypony, what's up? Uh, my name is Ozzy Brony, and today I will be reading the third chapter of The Changeling and the Pony. Um, yeah, um, <clears> hmm, <throat> I'm not very good at intros or outros, so I'm going to get straight into this. Um, I hope you enjoy the reading. Um, I'm going to start it now. Bye. A few days had gone by. The sky by now was still grey and there were showers every now and then. But other than that, other than that, the storm had died down. Fluttershy had been in hospital getting proper care for her wounds. Luckily, thanks to her friends, she hadn't been infected and they were able to cleanse her body of any unwanted toxins with some antibiotics. While she was there, it was up to the others to take care of her many animal pets, and it wasn't easy for them. They endured it, all, they endured it for her, though, and she was thank thankful for her help and for their help. In her time there, she already had millions, a million things like flowers, balloons, candy, and cards sent from her from her five friends and a few other ponies in Ponyville. She even got a big card signed or marked with her animal by her animals. Most of the gifts were from an excitable Pinky. Though Fluttershy appreciated all the gifts, she didn't really like so much attention and worry going towards her. Even if she deserved it, she still felt like it was a burden to them and really didn't want them to fret over her. She may be a delicate little thing, but in spirit she was far from weak. She'd get through this, and looked, and, and it looked like she was going very well. The only thing she could really have done without the horrible food, the only thing she really could have done without was the horrible food and hospital food. Rambo Dash wasn't kidding when she said it was bad. Not too far off from Ponyville in the woods was an, un, an all too familiar changeling staring at his reflection in the in a pool of water. He gawked at himself. He tipped his head from side to side. He had never noticed how ugly he was. Normally changelings never pay, neither paid attention, neither paid any attention to their reflection or their look since they were too busy serving their queen. But now he was alone and thinking alone. He finally realized just one of the main reasons ponies feared them. It was because they looked, and they just looked like monsters. Eventually, after looking at himself for what seemed like hours, the creature shook his head to clear his thoughts, then looked down into the water and focused again. He was a changeling. No, here he was, a changeling, and he was going to have to get into Ponyville to find the yellow pegasus, while remaining undetected. There was no way he could get by without being noticed, and even if he did somehow reach her, her the filly, her, the filly friends would guard her with their lives. I always thought the fillies were young males. He wouldn't stand a chance against all of them in his current starved state. No, he would need something better. He would need an easier way to get in without drawing attention to himself. He would need a disguise. Now, though changelings were natural shapeshifters, and this shouldn't be too hard for him, there was a problem. He just couldn't copy any of the main, any of the six ponies he'd met, or any he'd seen in Cantlot, as they would only, as that would only draw suspicion to him, and possibly even an, attra even an attraction, an interaction with the pony he was duplicating. No one had to know he was a changeling, else he'd be attacked. He would have to create his own disguise instead of mimicking another. And that was going to be much more difficult. He had only ever served and seen his queen do that, and it was tricky for her. He was a little stronger than his brothers and sisters when it came to magic, but it wasn't just and but it was just because he was bred to be one of the queen's royal captains and that he was older than most. Perhaps if he could just look took if he just took a pieces of ponies he'd seen and mash it together with some of his own colours into one disguise. That could possibly work. It wouldn't be full mimic it wouldn't be full mimicry 
but it wouldn't be full creativity either. Taking a deep breath and one more glan glance at himself in the pond, his horn began to glow dark, a dark green and its glow surrounded him. In a flash, his body was enveloped in a, into a new body made of fur and hair rather than bug wings and a shell. When he looked at himself in the water, he was stunned at what, he, at what looked back. What he saw in his reflection was not a ch his changeling self, but instead a stallion. His skin was the same colour, but it was a coat of fine fur instead of a coat of that's a misspell. <laughs> a coat of fine fur instead of a bug shell. His mane was a little long and ruffled. Was a long, a little long and ruffled. The colour of its of it blue, much like his queen's minus minus the holes at the end. He no longer had armour and armoured legs full of rotten looking holes, but instead two powerful dark blue hoofs that matched the patterns and the pattern on his back side. He turned slightly to the right He turned slightly to the right to look at his profile. He was already pretty strong for a changeling, and now with fur instead of a show his muscles showed through a little. He was a little skinnier than an average stallion because of his hunger and state stature of a chain joint. But it wasn't too obvious. His backside was the same dark blue of where his shell was supposed to be, but now it just looked more like a unique pattern. He was absent of a little mark on his flank, but that didn't but he didn't care about that. He didn't see the importance of those little patterns. And it was something he could conjure up even if he want it wasn't something he could conjure up even if he wanted to. His sharp horn looked now looked like a unicorn's rigged and a little dull instead of a short of short and lethal. His bug wings were replaced with feathered Pegasus wings. He held his new wings out to get a better look at them. They were greyish and they were a greyish brown like the rest of him, but at the tips were the original blue light blue colour of his bug wings. He sneered at the new set of and set and decided he would when he decided lastly he looked at his eyes. They had pupils and looked like pony a ponies, but the colour of the iris all as the same colour as his original eyes, ice blue. The whites of his eyes were a slightly lighter blue than white, much like his queen's. It was a little funny how he resembled his mother more than a, as a pony in some way than he did a changeling. All in all, he came out to look like an alicorn, and it was the best he could do with his limited abilities. He bit his lip absent of sharp teeth and poisonous fangs, but rather flat herbivore teeth and pony teeth. Knowing how flawed his disguise was, he had all the same colours as a changeling, and rather the same personality. Would he be able to fool them like this? He let, a, let out a small hiss and stopped in the middle of it. His voice, he needed a voice, a real one, and a real one. Changelings other than the Queen generally didn't talk. They didn't need to unless disguised. Well, this was a disguise, and he needed a voice. He thought of one, shining armors, and a mix and mixed it with his own to avoid suspicion by that pesky purple unicorn sister of his. A replicated and slightly altered voice would be easier to hide than a replicated appearance. He spoke a word he hadn't actually said in a long time, hello. His voice came out scratchy and gruff, even with the help of Shining Armor's voice, he was just not used to speaking in, at, speaking in words at all. He winced at the sound of his voice and tried again several times, looking at his reflection with determination. His speech was pretty limited, but as a changeling he would just adapt, he would learn other words around the ponies and incorporate them into his speech. That would be easy. Um, 
Oh, I lost my spot. How did I lose my spot? Um. Oh. Um. Oh, here we go. When his voice was finally the pitch and tone he wanted, he decided it was time to go. There was but one thing to remove now, and that was his royal chest plate. He frowned at the idea. Of the few things he had, his piece of armour held something sentimental to the creature due to few changelings having such an honour. Despite this, he removed the armour and decided to hide it away in a tree he knew he'd remember. In a tree he knew he'd remember. That way he could come back and retrieve it when he was ready. Now he could leave. By now it was mid-afternoon, but the sky was still grey and in overcast, promising more small showers that day. He had trotted along the path he knew led to Ponyville. He would smell their happiness a mile away. As he trotted, he tried his best to move like a pony. It was very difficult to hop along in such a silly manner. Did the sta did did the stains really move like this? After just a few minutes, he came up upon a gaudy, colourful, uh, the gaudy, colourful gates that welcomed him to po into Ponyville. Seriously, the colours of the buildings and the gates were disgustingly bright. Even the shadowy cast of, even in the shadowy cast of the rainy sky. Frowning as he approached, he hoped he wouldn't have to stay here t and stay too long in this horrible place. He just wanted to get in and earn some trust with the yellow Pegasus. He thought he wouldn't have to use seduction; just a little bit of trickery. Then, when she th thought he was part of their little group. The, and the others had grown to trust him too. That's when he, that's when he exact his revenge on the. One sec, guys, my dog's barking. Okay, guys, I'm back. <laughs> um, where was I? Um. Oh well. Um. Um. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um. When he had all the energy he needed, he would try again to find his hive, and they'd make this stupid little town. They'd take this stupid little town and all the others with it. <sighs> he smiled sinister to sinister, sinister, sin sinisterly to himself. Maybe his mother would keep the yellow filly alive just long enough to transform her into a changeling. Or even a servant to feed off for years, and he couldn't wait for it. Quickeningly and quickening his pace, he had gone into the gate eagerly. However, as soon as he came in, he noticed some of the ponies, which were just as awfully covered as their buildings, look look or glance at the new pony in their town. He slowed down and became apprehensive about the eyes on him. It really w wasn't that many, but his paranoia made it feel like thousands were watching him. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. Maybe it really had been better for him to take his chances and replicate a pony. He didn't know he'd be s he didn't know he'd be sticking out like a freaking sore thumb. Just when he was about to consider making a beeline back into the forest. A very hyper and eager pink pony popped right into his face, nearly making him jump out of his skin. Hey! She squealed, not making his racing heart slow down any far slow down any faster. I'm Pinkie Pie. Welcome to Ponyville, newbie. He only blinked at her when she threw herself onto him and gave him a nearly crushing hug. What in the name of Christmas has he gotten himself into? Okie dokie, Loki, every pony. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that uh, reading. Um, if you did, you can subscribe for more. Or uh, yeah, um, if you uh, liked the reading, uh, like, comment, and subscribe for more. Um, or whatever the big all the other YouTubers say. Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. Um. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, see you later, every pony. Uh, proud to be brainy. Rock on!
So wait, no, screw that. Okay, goodbye.